The name of this tutorial is Ira Krakow's Python 3 Tutorial Part 3, Lists. In Part 2, we saw different ways that string variables can be defined. In this tutorial, we'll see how lists of variables can be defined and used. You're basically creating more than one variable at a time in a structure called a list. Lists are a very important part of Python. If you want to be able to both program in Python and to read Python code written by others, you need to know how lists work. Don't worry, you'll get the hang of it if you practice a bit. As before, start Blender 2.5. We'll be using the Python console for the most current version, 2.5 Alpha 2. Go to the scripting setup, position the cursor in the Python console window at the lower left corner and press Control down arrow to maximize the window. In Python, if a variable is assigned to a value that's enclosed in single quotes or double quotes, like x equals single quote hello, single quote, or x equals double quote hello, double quote, then it's assumed to be a string. If the variable is assigned to a number, either a whole number or one with a decimal component, like x equals 2, the variable is numeric. You can add, subtract, multiply, and divide. The most recent assignment of the variable determines how it's used. Here's how it works. Type x equals quote hello, close quote, y equals quote world, quote. And then type x plus y, and you'll get hello world. It's concatenation because since x and y are enclosed in double quotes, Python interprets them as strings. And the plus operator for strings concatenates them, producing hello world. However, if you do x equals 2, y equals 2, and then enter x plus y, you get 4, because x plus y is a plus operator, and they're both defined as numbers, so the numbers are added. Now, Python won't allow numbers and strings to be added, so if x equals quote world quote, and so x plus y will produce an error message, because x will be a string and y will be an integer. With a list, you can define and work with lists of variables at once. Variables in the list are enclosed in square brackets. You can mix strings and numbers in the list. So let's start with a list x containing four variables, two strings and two numbers. x equals square bracket, quote, corn, quote, comma, quote, beef, quote, comma, 555, comma, 666, closing square bracket. The each variable in the list is called an element. Python has an interesting numbering system for list elements. It starts numbering from zero. So x at bracket zero is corn, x bracket one is beef, x bracket two is 555, and x bracket three is 666. You can use the plus operator on the list elements in the same way as if they were variables. So x 0 plus x1 equals corned beef. The first two elements are strings and they're concatenated. x2 plus x3 is 1221. The last two elements are uh, numbers, so they're going to be added. But x1 plus x2 will produce an error because x1 is a string and x2 is a number. So Python doesn't know how to add beef to 555. Now, Python also knows how to count backwards from the end of the list. The last element of the list has an index of negative 1. The next to the last has an index of negative 2, and so on. So x negative 1 is 666. x negative 2 is 555. x negative 3 is beef. And x negative 4 is corned. The plus operator works with negative indices just as with positive indices. So x minus 1 plus x minus 2 is 1221. x minus 3 plus x minus 4 is beef corned. And if you want to know how many elements are in the list, use the len function. Python provides many functions to save you the time and effort of writing a program to find out frequently needed information. We'll talk about functions in a future video. So if you enter len x, you'll get 4 because there are 4 elements in the list. You can change a list element, thus x0 equals roast, and then entering x, you'll get roast beef instead of corned beef. 
So the first element is changed from corned to roast. Or x3 equals x3 times 3. And then if you enter x, you'll see that the fourth element, 666, is multiplied by 3, so you get 1998. x1 equals x1 plus x0. And, and then you enter x, you'll get beef roast as the second element. If an element does not exist, Python produces an error message. Thus, x4 entered will produce a message that the list index is out of range. There is no x4. There are only four elements. Remember, we count from zero. So x4 attempts to reference the fifth element in the list. When we work backwards, remember that we started from negative one. So x negative four would be roast. However, trying to reference the fifth element, counting backwards, as in x negative five, will produce a list out of range error. You went beyond the extent of the list. You can define an empty list with no elements if you define just the square brackets with nothing between them. So if you type x equals left bracket, right bracket, and then enter x0, you'll get list index out of range. x is a list with no elements, so trying to access the first element in the list produces an error, because there's no first element. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this introduction to lists. There are many situations where handling groups of variables in a list will make our programming much easier. In the next part, we will discuss slicing, and you'll discover even more ways that Python can handle groups of variables easily. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the YouTube subscribe button and discuss it at forum.iracrackow.com. Happy Blender Pythoning!